Hi, welcome to Motorcycle.com. I'm Sean Maddock, the video content producer here. And every once in a while here at Motorcycle.com, we get sent a product that's not directly a motorcycle product per se. In this case, we got sent a 360 action camera, the Insta360 ONE X. That's why they threw the video guy in front of the camera for this one. So this was actually my first experience working with 360 cameras directly. I did have the uh, lucky fortune one time of being hired as a rider to shoot uh, with virtual reality 360 cameras as, you know, quote unquote stunt rider. And uh, that was a very different experience. And that was my only experience with 360 cameras. So as far as I knew, it was about VR, you know, virtual reality video, putting on a set of goggles and you look around and it's like you're immersed in the scene. Cool stuff, not really something that we do here at Motorcycle.com. Uh, little did I know that there's a whole other side of 360 cameras that's totally applicable to producing YouTube content or you know your traditional two-dimensional on a screen in front of you video. Uh, that's where this little baby comes in. The interesting thing about this is the project that I worked on, it was only about two years ago, and the, uh, the camera rig that I had to wear was this huge halo around my head with multiple action cameras that they then had to use some really powerful software to stitch together. You know, enter 2019-2020 and Insta360 comes out with this little baby, the One X, and it does everything that did in this little small package. So I don't know if those guys are still in business. Hopefully they, they figured out a way to move on with their tech. But anyway, so this is the camera here, a small bit larger than a GoPro. The main advantage of 360 cameras as far as action sports and, and why they're a game changer in my opinion is you don't miss a shot. As long as the action takes place anywhere viewable in a 360 degree area around where you mount the camera, you've got the shot. Uh, a traditional action camera, if you have it mounted on the front of your bike and something really amazing happens behind your bike, to your right or to your left, it's not in frame, you're not getting it. With one of these, you're going to get it. Also brings me to one of the disadvantages of a 360 camera in comparison to a traditional action camera. Uh, the first one is battery time. This lasts about an hour on a charge, so if you're going to be shooting a long race or you know, a full day shoot with a lot of different stuff, you might want to stock up on some batteries. Uh, the other thing you need to keep in mind is file size. Uh, the files are 5.7K. Now, don't let that confuse you with like 4K or 6K. It's not 5.7K all visible on the screen at once. That's 5.7K when you combine the two cameras. You have a front and a rear camera. So these cameras, they're actually game changing. I'm going to tell a little story that sort of exemplifies why they're so cool and how they're such great products to use for action sports video. Uh, we were up at Laguna Seca, myself and Troy Siahan, doing some ARMA races back in February before COVID-19 shut everything down. And on the start of the Sound of Thunder 2 race that I'd entered in, on the first lap, a gentleman in front of me on a Daytona 675 lost rear grip, spun out in front of me, and I narrowly missed him. If I could use this, these two boxes to sort of demonstrate the vehicles, if this this was me with the uh, Insta360 on the front of the bike, and this was the gentleman in front of me. As he started to spin out, I went around him, narrowly missed, almost went off the edge of the track and kept going. Now, the reason I bring this up is not to talk about my race results, but to talk about how cool the camera is. Because normally, if you had a GoPro on the front of the bike, as soon as you get here, this guy's no longer in frame, and you're missing the rest of the spectacular spin out that happened. I mean, this guy actually did a full rotation on the bike before he got spit off. Luckily, he was okay. But with the Insta360, when I got back to the pits after we had a couple restarts and then finally the, the race was canceled for good for the day, it lets you rotate your point of view uh, either with your live video that you're shooting as you're setting up a shot so you can check in the front and behind camera everything you want visible is visible or you can review the footage you got. So we got back in the pits, took a look, and the entire accident was right there. And because I was so close right behind this other rider on his rear wheel, we got you know such a great seat of it. And as we're passing around his motorcycle, I could just pan the point of view to stay locked with him in the center of the frame. That's not something you could do with a conventional uh, action camera. And that's one of the really cool parts about using 360 video for a conventional two-dimensional video. I'm not sure if this is something with all the Insta360s, but uh, the stability of the files wasn't quite as robust, let's say, as what I'm used to with GoPro action cameras. Uh, more than once, I would have the camera, you know, 
freeze up on me. It, wouldn't, it basically wouldn't stop recording. I'd have to pull the battery out to uh, get it to reset. And then whatever was recording at that time, I lost. Uh, that really bitching video I was telling you about where we got back in the pits at that race at Laguna Seca and I started reviewing it, I actually lost that too. Uh, that obviously was intact when I got back in the pits because we were able to see it on the iPhone app. But when I went to transfer to my computer, uh, although the cord was still connected, somehow the connection disconnected and it corrupted the file. The card was then unreadable and uh, I couldn't recover any of the Insta360 files from that card. I did also have some GoPro files that were on the same card. Those were readable. Uh, a couple times after that when we were out shooting, one time at Chukwala, you know, there's a few times where I sent Troy out with this up on his shoulder, came back in, excited to look at the footage, went to stop recording. It wouldn't stop recording. I had to pull the battery out to reset it, discovered that those files weren't usable. Operation of the Insta360 is pretty straightforward. You hit the power button, that's the smaller of the two buttons on the front, hold it for about three seconds, it powers up. I think it defaults into photo mode. Uh, the power button also doubles as a mode button, so you hit it a second time, and you get this little camera icon. You're now in video mode. I think the standard mode uh, is 5.7K, or that's, what I, that's the highest resolution it'll shoot at. That's what I use for everything. Uh, and then the larger button, that's your record. You, get your f you hear the beep and your flashing tally light, you know you're recording, hit it again to stop. Uh, the nice part is they give you a record light on both sides of the camera, so either way it's facing you know when you're live. Now the LCD screen, in, in, in my opinion, it's a little bit dated looking. Uh, it's kind of like a Casio watch from the 90s. Uh, so uh, there's another way you can operate this, which is through a phone app, and it's a really beautiful app that they have. Uh, it runs both on iPhone and Android, so once you're Insta360 is powered up. You just go and get in there and launch your Insta360 ONE X software. Select camera, connect via Wi-Fi. Pretty much the same thing you do to connect a GoPro to a phone app for GoPro. It asks you if you want to join, yes. And you can rotate your point of view around like I was describing. This is a great uh, option to use out in the field. One thing I do want to let you know though, be sure if you are using the phone app, um, don't try to power down your phone to save battery on your phone while this is in range. Because if you do, you hear that, this shuts off and you don't record anything. So keep that in mind. What I normally do is I use this to line up the shot, start recording, and just let my subject ride out of range, which is about 20 or 30 feet, and it's going to keep recording and you can power down your phone, save your phone's battery while you're out there. Insta360 comes with a nice group of accessories. Uh, one of the most unusual is this, uh, it's called a bullet time rig. So you have, we've seen these before for phones and action cameras, a cool little tripod that you can mount the Insta360 straight onto. But there's a mode that these guys created that's really neat called bullet time, where you actually spin the camera above your head What happens is when you play it back, you're getting a point of view like what you'd see in the Matrix movies, surrounding whoever's holding this, almost like stop frame animation. Pretty cool stuff. Not something we'd probably use a lot for uh, doing motorcycle review videos, but pretty cool tech in a very small package, nonetheless. Insta360 also sent us a few other accessories that were very useful. There's a, a bike mounting bundle. Uh, pretty similar stuff to what we're used to seeing with GoPro and Sony action cameras. Um, there's a little extension, a handlebar mount, uh, if you don't want to use the bullet arm you can use this little string with a thread on the bottom and spin the camera around your head that way as well. Uh, your, your mounts are pretty much exactly what you'd use on a GoPro like this so you can use a 3M sticky mount and to just attach it to the camera you got your little quarter 20 thread Put that in there, cinch it up with one of these guys we're all familiar with and you're ready to go. So pretty straightforward. Uh, I think that's nice that Insta360 didn't try and reinvent the wheel, but just kind of design mounting products that were what, something that we're already going to be used to with GoPro. So kudos to them for that. Uh, one more accessory that I've found really useful for shooting motorcycles, action cameras, and it's something that we've had a few viewers on 
uh, the YouTube ask is how we got some shots, uh, particularly the over the shoulder shot where the camera's kind of looking down over the shoulder and helmet of the rider. Uh, I just thought I'd throw this one out there for you guys too. This is a Glide Gear Medusa body harness. Bit of a mouthful, but um, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's got a chest plate right around your sternum with a bunch of quarter 20 mounting holes and then a back plate with mounting holes at the shoulder and mid back location. And they even include uh, one adjustable mounting arm like that. So that's how we got our over the shoulder shot. I mounted it on the shoulder and you just take your Insta360 camera Thread it onto the little quarter 20 there. Fit this over the rider's head. The nice part about this, uh, it's pretty adjustable. So we were able to work with uh, racetrack stuff, you know, even with suits with an aero speed hump in the, on the back, we can still fit it over. And there you have it. That's your over the shoulder shot. But if you want to adjust it, you know, put the camera in the front, you could do that. But like I was saying, the great part of these 360 cameras is no matter where the action happens, you're going to get it. So let's say you're starting a race or something like that. If they let you with a rig like this, you can tilt the point of view down of the 360 video. That's the beauty of it. You can put it wherever you want it. You can pan, tilt up, down. So you could get, so let's say, you know, the throttle hand and the clutch of the competitor on the start. And then once the race goes, point to whatever you want to highlight. When the action cameras first came on the scene, it was great to have something that was small affordable, rugged, and you can put it pretty much anywhere you wanted. Well, now this brings 360 video in the same accessibility. Uh, the price, very reasonable, $399.95. So this is really a game-changing product. Uh, I definitely recommend using it. Uh, are we at the point where it's gonna completely replace your standard action cameras? So, you know, there's a couple of reservations. Like I said, the biggest one that I was a little cautious about was those files kind of getting corrupted a little more often than I would like. But other than that, I'm a fan. Uh, I think 360 video is here to stay. I'm always going to have one of these in my kit. So in conclusion, I'm a huge fan of this. I think this is a game-changing product. I think 360 video is definitely here to stay. I'm a convert. Uh, like I said, there was a couple of things. The biggest one being those files not always working, which is kind of a big letdown, but hopefully that was just maybe a bad SD card or this particular model that I got sent. We'll, we'll do a little more research on that. Uh, but moving forward, I'm going to be using 360 cameras for all my Motorcycle.com productions because just that knowing that whatever happens, we're not going to miss a shot. How can you beat that? So be sure and go to Motorcycle.com to read the article and come back here for all your motorcycle shootout and review needs. Thanks guys. See you soon.